you are where Pistol Pete rides. And every man is a wildcat. Sirius XM, Big 12 Radio, 375. Big 12 this morning, Sirius XM, Channel 375. With Fozzie Whitaker, Texas X, former Carolina Panther on Twitter at Fozzie Witt. I am Ari Temkin. Let's talk now with R.J. Young. Does a great job covering Oklahoma Sooners. You can catch him on ESPN Radio. Good morning, R.J. How are you? Hey, fellas. Thanks for having me. So, how did it happen? How did how did Oklahoma get this victory? <laughs> how indeed? I mean, this game was done with about six minutes left to go, and we're still waiting on the Big 12 Conference to tell us how Texas ended up with another 30 seconds back on the clock. But outside of that, Sam Ellinger was body snatched in the fourth quarter and started spinning it like the Heisman candidate everybody thought he was going to be. And, of course, throws that interception in the fourth overtime in which a game, I don't know about you, Fozzie, but I was losing my mind about four or five times through the middle of this game. (laughs) You're right about that because I was like, what is happening? What is going on? Like you said, about six minutes left in that fourth quarter, I was just ready for it to be over because it seemed like it it was going to be over. But for some reason, Sam has found a way to – to wheel this team back into the game for the past three weeks, and it's just luck ran out. But that, you're right, man. I was pulling his hair all out of my head and everything. <laughs> I mean, Lincoln throwing the ball on third and nine with Texas is out of timeouts. At the end of a game of seven, it's like, what? what is happening? I mean, it, mistakes from both sides, bad mistakes, pulled quarterbacks. It was just too much to go through, I suppose. Absolutely. I mean, you look at this game, and I count it. I count it. There were five fumbles and three interceptions. Like, what are we doing here? And if I had told you that Sam Ellinger would go for 399 yards total and six tutties, you'd probably tell me they won the football game. But they didn't. And then there's this wild stat about Oklahoma being ahead by 14 going into the fourth quarter. And I'm going, yeah, okay, that's going out the window with this team because – They can't finish. It's one of the worst feelings in the world to know that your offense is one of the best at getting off the ball and can't actually put games away to say nothing of who was the quarterback in the second quarter because it looked like Tanner Mordecai had an opportunity to take the job away from the five-star quarterback. you got to feel good if you're the Texas defense because you put the five-star quarterback on the bench. And then after getting the hook, they put him back on stage in the Apollo, and he goes and roasts you in the third quarter. Like, if I'm Chris Ash, I don't even know what I got right now, and that's the worst feeling for a play caller. Yeah, great point. No question. Uh, no question. Mordecai really looked out of his element a bit there, especially in that fumble that he had. RJ, I mean, for me, there's so much craziness that happened in this game, but at the end of the day, it was just so obvious that Oklahoma won this game on both sides last scrimmage. I mean, they, they were dominant up front on the defensive line and on the offensive line. To me, that's you know, maybe it's overly simplistic considering how it ended, but to me, that was just the essence of this game. That's why Oklahoma won. They were just better on up front on both sides of the ball. But they didn't start that way, Ari. Like, the offensive line for Oklahoma is the strength of this football team, and they have not played like it right. at all this year. I mean, Creed Humphrey is your preseason All-American, and he's botching the snap. You don't know who the left tackle is, and then it looked like Anton Harrison comes to solidify that position, but that's bad, too. Good for him, true freshman out there getting reps at, at left tackle. Bad for the offensive line depth because they count a five-star in Bray Walker. There's a Stacey Wilkins who he groomed for this job. And there's a Daryl Simpson that we hadn't heard from. And we all know that Andrew Rame, who is from my hometown, is actually one of the better, more talented offensive linemen they've been able to land here of recent. So I need Bill Beatonbow to figure it out. And from Texas' side, I'm looking at Oklahoma, and I see you got two running backs. You got two scholarship running backs, and they got to run them both. That means you got to hit somebody. You got to force them to throw a wide out back there, a full back back there. You have to take away this run game and make the five-star quarterback beat you through the air, and they refuse to do it. Like, I keep waiting on Jawan Mitchell or Joseph Asai to go in there and throw a forearm shiver that puts somebody on their back, and it never happened, guys. I... I was frustrated on both sides of this ball going, okay, nobody wants to win. Cool. It's just it's it's just the Red River rivalry. It's just the Red River showdown. It's just for your life and mine, but they don't want to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's all sad. RJ, you make you make a great point there. Uh just talking about Texas waiting to 
waiting, waiting, and then trying to – somebody's not stepping up to make the play. Uh, I went to your Twitter, and I was I was seeing some of the things that you put on there, and I saw your YouTube channel about uh, what Texas needs to do to get back. But if you could, just inform some of our listeners kind of what you think or what are your thoughts that Texas needs to do in order to be uh, a team that can dominate again. Just develop what you got, Fozzie. Like, that's the wild thing about Texas Longhorns football is it ain't about recruiting. It's about evaluation. And that was true when Mac was there. That was true when Charlie was there. You're going to get the dudes you're supposed to get. You're going to get dudes like Fozzie Whitaker. It's going to happen. You're going to get dudes like Jamal Charles. It's going to happen. You're going to get dudes like Ricky Williams. It's going to happen. You have to develop those guys into the kind of players that they need to be. As a matter of fact, Insult to injury here right quick, but this story just stands out to me. Garrett Wilson is a slot receiver at Ohio State right now. Played high school football in the Austin area at Lake Travis. They say to the man, why did you choose Ohio State over Texas? He said, because I want to go where I'm going to get developed. Yo, man, like if Sam Ellinger is your ceiling, Sam Ellinger needs to be a first-round draft pick at quarterback, and right now he's just redefining the fullback position. I need that to change. I need Herb Hand to figure it out. This is back-to-back years where Alex Grinch has said, no, okay, we can beat that dude up with stunts. Y'all can't pick up those stunts after two years? Now, people clown Oklahoma's defense, and yet Oklahoma's defense showed up the last two years to beat up on a Texas offense that I thought was going to be great. You got trees out there, man. You got six foot six Malcolm Epps. You got six foot seven Jared Wiley. You got six foot three Brendan Eagles. You got six foot three Tarek Black. All you got to do is throw the ball up over this short defensive backs at Oklahoma, and you should win the game. So at this point, I got to look at the staff. I got to say Tom Herman is the only data point left, right? Him and Herb Ann. You brought in Chris Ash. You brought in Mike Yersich to win this football game, and it ain't getting done. So if you can get somebody that is a king developer, to get Texas to where they're going, forget a Big 12 championship. Texas is back when they win a national championship. And that ain't happened in 15 years. And while we're talking about it, how many conference championships has Texas won in the last 40? Like, outright conference championships. I think it's like seven. I need Texas to be good in the same way that I need Nebraska to be good, in the same way I need Arkansas to be good. It's really fun to watch college football when the old Southwest Conference is just getting it in, when the old Big 8 Conference is just getting it in. You just need to develop what you got. Talk with RJ Young here, Big 12 Radio, Channel 375. RJ, what does this game do, in your opinion, to Oklahoma's chances of still winning the Big 12? Man, you need magic. You need Kansas State to forget their Kansas State or to act like they're Kansas State more to the point. Act like Michael Bishop ain't back there. You need, you need Oklahoma State to have played this game that's been postponed against Baylor and catching L. Like, you need so many things to go your way. But, you know, that, that is as it should be this year. The, the Big 12 is a dumpster fire. It's a, it's a Sun Belt property this year. As a matter of fact, I think the Sun Belt should really start lobbying for that New Year's six spot that the Big 12 is contractually obligated to have because I look at an Iowa State team to beat up on Oklahoma and lost to ULL. I look at a Kansas State team beat up on Oklahoma, lost to Arkansas State. And remember, Oklahoma is the crown jewel of the Big 12 conference. So if they can't beat the teams that got beat by Sun Belt teams, what are we actually talking about here, guys? <laughs> You're right about that. In, in your opinion, then, since we've had such a, a crazy dumpster fire Big 12 year, who do you think is, is the best team right now in the Big 12 that will be in the Big 12 championship here in December? As much as it just – boggles the mind to say it, I think it's got to be Oklahoma State because I think they might have it figured out at quarterback. You know, I'm not I'm not into the Spencer Sanders experience because the dude just put the ball on the ground and throws it to the other team. Like, he's got all the tools that I would want for a modern college football quarterback. But you can't give the ball away, especially when you got Tylen Wallace over there, right? You got Chuba Hubbard in the back. You got to be able to get those dudes to rock. And Shane Illingworth, The true freshman quarterback is doing that. He's big, he's strong, he throws the ball down the field, he's unafraid, and Jim Knowles' defense continues to get better. I love what Malcolm Rodriguez has turned into. They drop him down from safety to linebacker. You got Colby Harvell Peel back there. They have the tools to be there at the end. It's just about this schedule that they've started with. To say nothing of the Baylor game, it's just 
It ain't the best teams in the Big 12. I need to see them do this against Iowa State, Texas Christian, Kansas State. But right now, I think it's got to be Oklahoma State in there. RJ Young, make sure to follow him on Twitter and check out his great work on YouTube and, of course, on ESPN Radio. RJ, you're the best, man. Keep it up. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you, brother. You have a good day.